Hey art nerds! So over the years we've talked a lot about figure drawing and we've talked a lot about volumetric drawing. Today I want to kind of bridge some of the gaps that I've noticed in the tutorials that I've released. So in a prior tutorial we talked about drawing basic 3D volumetric shapes like spheres, cubes, cylinders, pyramids, cones, so these are kind of the basic building blocks for just about anything we're going to want to draw. Then in a way earlier video, we talked about how to take these basic 3D shapes and use them to draw, you know, like objects from around the house. And we did quite a few of those. Because repetition makes us better artists. We also talked about how to use those forms to draw animals. And I have a whole tutorial series on drawing animals here on this channel that will not only teach you how to draw animals, but how to go about figuring out how to draw animals that we may not have covered in that series. We've also spent time taking those forms and learning how to draw people with them. We've spent a lot of time here on this channel doing that. And we've talked about how the horizon line is going to affect the cylinders that we draw in the form itself. We've talked about drawing characters in three different styles. We've talked about drawing hands. We've talked about changing up different elements of the face to change the character drawn. We've talked about designing characters. We've talked about how to draw eyes and noses and hair. We've talked about how to draw clothing. We've even talked about how to draw the head from various different angles. So we've talked a lot about drawing people, drawing animals and volumetric drawing here on this channel. And I'm still seeing people kind of struggling with it. So I wanted to use today to kind of go in with some real world examples. And I'm sure YouTube is gonna flag this Figma statue. We're going to use some physical manipulatives to better help us understand how these how these principles apply to drawing people and how you can use these principles to draw something that's really cute and cartoony or something that has entirely different proportions and yeah i am using my own figure collection to help with this and i'm recording this tutorial to help me prep for the figure drawing class that I'm going to be teaching my 10 and 11 year olds through the Little Art House. So if you're interested in taking classes with me, I have a class mailing list. You'll find a link to that down in the description below. You can sign up and I'll let you know when there are classes in your area. So I wanna start out with how to use, utilize some of the templates I've made over the years. And my art nerds over on Patreon have access to all these templates. These are things that I've made for various in-person classes that I teach. And if you'd like to gain access to these, you can join me at patreon.com slash natosoup and help support that I'm, the work I'm doing here. I also have some of these available over on Gumroad at gumroad.com slash natosoup. So one of the things I want to point out to you guys is that this is kind of a different technique for constructing figures. And for those of you who might be more used to the how to draw manga way of drawing figures, this is going to be a completely new way of drawing figures for you guys. And this is the sort of thing that the more you practice it, the easier it's going to become and the more you're going to be able to remember it. And I want to show you every day I do two five minute sketches utilizing Senshi stock for reference. And we're actually going to be using a couple of Senshi stock poses later on too. So this is the sort of thing that the more time you invest into it, the better you're gonna get and the easier it's going to become. So I don't wanna scare you guys off or discourage you guys too much. Just know that this is something you need to practice. So a while back in one of my live streams, I actually took one of those how to draw mannequins. 
So you can see this here. This is what most people start out learning how to draw, particularly if you're working from those books. And those books seem to be really focused on young female artists. So I want to give a shout out to you guys for taking the time to learn how to draw and practicing at home. This video is for y'all. And then this is the more reform font form of their mannequin, right? And I don't like this mannequin because it's very stiff. The joints are treated as balls, whereas many of our joints are more like hinges. So it doesn't actually teach you a whole lot about body movement. And then this is my redraw using how I think about anatomy on top of that. So this is my preferred method. And I feel like this conveys the volume of the human body a bit better than this does here. Now this is based off of like those wooden mannequins that a lot of art stores have. I wish I had one on hand to show you guys. I don't. I'm not really a big fan of those wooden mannequins, but I do think they can be a very useful tool for people who are just starting to learn. What I have here instead is, and I have the mail and I don't know where he ran off to, but these Figma posable figures and a lot of different brands make these. They can be kind of expensive. And what I like about these is they're much more realistic. The range of movement is much better than those dolls. Of course, you do have to bend them back into place. And the joints are a bit more realistic to real human joints. The range of motion is a bit more realistic to how real people move. So this is one of the Figma dolls. And I know some of you guys who draw digitally Clip Studio Paint provides drawing mannequins that you can basically trace over, but I would really, really recommend you actually learn human anatomy and study human anatomy rather than being reliant on that. It's going to make you much more flexible as an artist. It's gonna enable you to take at con commissions rather than not ever being able to take at con commissions. And it's just going to make your drawing repertoire a lot more robust. So that's what I would recommend is that you practice this from real life and use reference. So one of the things I want to start with today is how do we get those shapes that I just showed you guys? Where in the human body are those shapes coming from? And I have here a few Senshi stock poses printed out using my wonderful toner printer. That color accuracy is just really up there. And we're going to do this the old fashioned way, kind of the same way we did our animal tutorials with just some tracing paper and a dual sided pencil. And I recommend if you guys are ever practicing forms and you're having difficulty understanding it, print it out and trace it. And that'll kind of help you figure out what's going on with the pose. So what I'm going to do with this is we're going to start with our line of action. And that basically helps us place the figure. The line of action shows which way the movement of the figure is going. It can also give an idea of where gravity is affecting the figure. So we have our line of action first. Then I'm going to draw in our triangle and that is the torso that helps me place both the rib cage and the pelvis. She's facing somewhat over to the side. So I'm just going to imply a little bit of three dimensionality here. Then where her rib cage is, we're gonna sketch in this kind of egg shape. And where her neck's gonna go, I draw an oval and I place a line, that's where her neck would be. Then for her hips and her pelvis, I draw kind of an oblong egg shape. Some people box that in. I've also seen this drawn as kind of a cup shape that's tilted downward. In the pelvis, we're drawing the hips and the hips kind of look like the axle on a car. Then I'm just going to draw sticks right now to show her legs and triangles to show her feet. Then up here, I'm going to draw kind of a bow shape for the collarbone. And we're going to use sticks and round mitten shapes to sketch in her hands. Then finally, for her head, we're going to use a sphere. 
And then for this, for now, we're just going to use kind of an oval shape to sketch in her head. I have a lot of videos here on the channel on how you can draw heads constructively. A lot of people kind of struggle with that. It does get kind of complicated. So we're going to keep it really, really simple for now. So this is just kind of like an elevated stick figure of our original pose. So let's go ahead and do another one that's slightly more complicated. All right, so we've got our second figure prepared. This one is a little bit more complicated. We're gonna draw that line of action from the head down to the feet. Then our rectangle in this instance is really visible from the side. And for those of you who may have attended some of my From Stick to Figure classes, you guys may have heard me refer to like the rectangular torso, the jelly bean torso, and the flower sack torso. But in reality, torsos are very flexible, as you guys could see with the Figma posable fi figurine. They're very flexible. There's a lot of range of movement. And if you guys Google like yoga poses, that'll give you guys a good idea of just how flexible the human spine and the human figure can be. So this rectangle is a very, it's more like a pillow. It's a very mushy, malleable rectangle. So inside our rectangle, we have our egg shape and we have our oblong shape and then our little wheel axle or our axle with wheels. We would see most of it from this angle. And then we have our sticks for legs and our triangular shapes, our wedges for feet. The bow for the collarbone and our stick hands. And then this one has a lot of foreshortening. So the hand coming towards us is gonna be a lot larger than the hand moving away. And then our sticks for hands on the other side a stick to imply the neck, our sphere, and then just to keep things easy, an oval coming down from the front of the sphere. So now you kind of see where we're getting the shapes from. What I wanna do is I wanna redraw this for you guys and walk you through the process in my sketchbook. So, we start with our line of action, then our rectangular torso. Then we subdivide that into the egg-shaped rib cage and the oval or oblong hip box. Then we sketch in the wheels and the axle for the hips. And then we use sticks for the arms and the legs. And I curve them inward. If you guys, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print up a picture of a human skeleton to show you guys in a minute. It's an important reference to have. Neck for, or the stick for the neck. A bow, like a bow shape, kind of like a bow and arrow. A bow shape for the collarbone, and then this also connects the shoulders. And then again, sticks for the arms, oval mitten shapes for the hands, a circle for the head, and then we're doing this the simple way, an oval to kind of block in the face. So that's a pretty simple front view. Next, we're gonna do a three quarters view. And the line of action is gonna help you keep the head and the back of the heels lined up. So for the three quarters view, we turn it away from the viewer. It doesn't really matter which direction you turn it away from, but you wanna be consistent. So we have our rectangular shape. You can also see one of the sides. This is why I push the volumetric drawing aspect and why I really, really recommend that you guys practice it as much as possible. The egg shape 
the neck hole, which is at the top of the egg shape. Sketching in the head a little bit early, but that's okay. The oblong shape for the hips, then the wheel and axle. And you can kind of rough in the gesture for your legs early on. And that'll kind of help you place everything. The sticks for our legs. The triangles for our feet. The bow for the collarbone. And then the sticks for the arms. And I would really recommend you guys read, especially those of you who are adults, read Andrew Loomis's figure drawing for what it's worth. He has a skeletal breakdown figure that is really great. Um, the way I draw this is kind of a combination between what he shows and what Glenn Vilpu shows. And it works for me, but I really encourage you to find your own that works for you. And uh, he also breaks down the proportions of the human body. So this is basically like Kara's proportions from my comic 7-inch Kara. So um, if you're drawing kids, they're generally like 5 head heights tall and I've talked about this in some of the other videos if you're drawing women they're six to seven and if you're drawing men drawing men not realistically just drawing men they're usually like eight that's considered like superhero or idyllic proportions and it can go all the way up to ten so you can imagine some people have like really tiny heads like this lady right here right her her head is super tiny compared to the rest of her body so that would be like supermodel fashion model or um if you were drawing like mannequins for fashion design. So depending on what kind of drawing you're doing, the head proportion is going to change based on the look. So for example, we have a Nendo of Sakura Kinamoto and she's about two heads tall. Whereas this Figma we have of her, she's more like six heads tall with her legs taking up most of her body height. So depending on what art style you're drawing in and what look you're going for, the proportions are going to change drastically. And then finally, I will do a profile view. In between now and then, I need to sharpen this pencil. So while y'all are still learning this and studying different types of skeletons, what I would recommend you do is go to the Senshi Stock Pose Timer. And we're not affiliated in any way. I just think she does really good work. And practice drawing different poses using this skeletal structure. And I have some examples that I'm going to show you guys in a minute. And we'll work our way really quickly through those. And your goal for drawing the skeleton, and it's going to take you a while to get to this goal, okay? So be patient with yourself. But your goal is to get it down to about in a minute. So we have our rectangular torso. I drew the circle for the head. I drew the oval for the face. We drew the uh, oval for the neckline at the top of our egg shape. We drew a stick to show where the neck is going to connect to the head. And this is a very simplified version of it. Then we drew the oblong for the pelvis. We drew the wheel that shows our hip bones. We drew it from the side. And our thigh bone comes from the back and moves forward. And then you don't want to do it too, too much because then basically the feet aren't aligned with the back of the head. Do it again. And we use kind of a rectangular shape for the feet. So that's three different views for a really basic, oh wait, got to do the arms, of course. So with female figures, our elbows, oh, she's so janky. Our elbows usually align with where our waist is and our hands kind of, the wrist on our hands kind of hit where the thigh bone starts. So where this part would be where the wrist is and then the hand comes down a little bit longer than that. And if you were drawing hands in proportion, they should cover about half of your face. 
Alright, so we have here a view of the human skeleton. What I want to do with you guys is I want to draw over it again and kind of show you where we're getting our forms from and how we're simplifying our forms. So fortunately, we have a front view, a side view, and we have a back view. I don't normally talk to you guys about back views when we're doing the simplified version of things, just because the front and the back in a very simplified skeletal drawing, they're going to be basically the same. Okay, so for our front, the reason we draw a rectangle is because generally, and I know when we draw people, we typically either draw the hips bigger than the shoulders or vice versa, but typically they're about the same size. So that is why I usually draw in the rectangular shapes for our torso to help us block everything in because all of our torso is going to fit into that. Then you can see the rib cage is kind of egg shaped and it divots up like this. It kips forward here. We usually, when I draw my line of action, that allows me to place my spine as well. But if you're not drawing a line of action, it's really helpful and important to draw the spine. Then for the pelvic box, I block it in using kind of an oblong shape. But as you guys can see, this is a way to simplify it. Then you see the neck comes in here at the top of the rib cage. And when we're looking at a skeletal view, it pretty much looks like a stick. The top of the skull is our spherical shape. And then just for simplification purposes, I've just been extending it down into an oval. Then our hips, so you can see our femur comes out a little bit. That's where it attaches into the pelvic bone. So that's why I draw it kind of curving inward. Then our knees, then our lower legs, and then I do little triangles to block in the feet. Then I use this bow shape to block in the collarbone. And when you're drawing the arms and legs like this, you want to break them down into the top part of the legs and the bottom part of the legs, the top part of the arms and the bottom part of the arms. And then when I'm sketching in the round part of the hand, I'm actually sketching in the palm of the hand. We'll do the same thing over here. So the bow of the collarbone. And then I'm actually having a hard time. See, ah, they drew them with the arms behind the back, it looks like. We're just going to draw that over. And you can see the femur kind of goes backwards a little bit, connects in with the knee. And then you can draw a triangle for the foot here. And then for the back, when we're doing just stick figures, when we're doing gesture figures, pretty simple, pretty similar to the front in terms of what we actually see. So we draw in our rectangle. We have our egg shape for our rib cage. The neck hole would actually be on the front of the skeleton, but we draw it through anyway. So we can see it and we can place the head appropriately. The spinal column which connects the rib cage to the pelvis. The little wheels on the car. And then smaller triangles in the back to show the heels. bow of the collarbone which would be visible in the front and we do have shoulder blades and some people do benefit from drawing those so really like I said earlier it's all about finding a system that works for you and then the mittens for the hands so you guys can kind of see 
where I get my simplified skeletal structure from. It's very similar to how we developed skeletal like uh, posing mannequins for the animals that we did in our animal drawing tutorials. So earlier I mentioned Andrew Loomis's figure drawing for all it's worth. This is how Loomis suggests that we construct a posable mannequin figure, which can then be fleshed out into this. So we start developing the muscle masses, which can then be further fleshed out into this a proportioned muscular form. Now unfortunately, figure drawing for all it's worth is a great resource for drawing men, not necessarily a great resource for drawing women. So I highly recommend you kind of take it with a grain of salt and you find other methods to help augment this. This is great for drawing men, but the women, their proportions are very 1940s in terms of aesthetic and not very realistic and certainly not really in keeping with modern aesthetics. So while I recommend it, I do recommend you find other drawing resources that'll help you out. So I promised you guys a little bit earlier that we were going to do some pose studies using our sort of wireframe human posable stick figure mannequin. So while this is a fairly sizable desk, it's not infinitely big, so I don't have room for everything, but I thought it was important to try and have the images we're going to be referencing on the screen for you guys so you guys can see what I'm doing and just kind of keep the stick figure in your mind. So we're gonna start with this one here and I'm gonna draw them really small because we're just trying to do those sort of minute exercises and I'll walk you guys through a few of them. So we have our line of action we have our rectangle and as you practice this I really recommend adding some dynamism to your rectangle kind of implying the shoulders and the hips we have our egg shape or the rib cage we have the top of the rib cage where the rib cage meets the neck maybe it's Send that line of action down because I do want to pose the legs. in our legs, our triangles for our feet, our little mitten hands, and then our circles and our rectangles for the heads. And the more you practice this, the more you're going to develop a library of poses that you can reference when you don't have reference. All right, let's complicate things a little bit. We've got a kneeling pose here. So our line of action is like this, and it may even help to kind of figure out the basic form the pose takes. So this has kind of a triangular composition. Then we have our rectangle, our oval shaped rib cage, our oval shaped pelvic box, wheels on the car, nah, the, the axle of the pelvis, then her legs are doing, they're not just standing there, right? She's kneeling. So we have one that's making contact with the ground, hips up, and then her foot is making contact with the ground behind her, kind of keeping in that triangular pose. Then the leg that's further away from us is up and back like this with this foot making contact with the ground. And then her arms are in front of her with her hands clasped. Then we have a circle for the head and it's tilted upward. And then we're just using the oval to sketch in the face. All right, let's try two more and then we'll move on. So we have here, it looks like she's throwing a stone. So 
this one, you can see the rectangle of her torso is really crunched in there. Which makes this side look longer. So drawing from reference is a lot about learning how to see and learning how to notice details and think about details and express them in your drawing. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to capture the essence of the pose or the gesture. And then it really doesn't matter what art style you draw it in, it's still going to read as that pose. And I actually have a series of videos where I show you guys how to do sort of daily drawing warm-ups like these. I'm going to link everything that we kind of talked about in this video down in the description below as well as in the card so you guys will be able to find it if you're looking for more drawing tutorials. I also have a playlist, my favorite drawing tutorials, that should be a great resource for you guys. And of course, if you're having trouble with your art and with your drawing, you're welcome to join me in my Discord server, The Paint Box. There'll be a link for that down in the description below as well. So this is interesting because this arm is forward and this hip, so there's a twist that I didn't necessarily express. With most of the weight being on this leg here. And knowing which leg is going to carry the weight or which limb, maybe someone's doing a handstand or maybe you're drawing an animal, which limb carries the weight is going to help you draw figures that feel like they're connected with the earth and like they're not just floating on the paper. All right, and then she's rowing with this arm. So this arm is forward, or this part of the arm is forward and then this part is rearing back. To prepare for the throw and then this arm here is behind her to kind of give some momentum and stability and then we have this one right here so to make best use of my paper i'll go ahead and rotate it so this rectangle is interesting because this one's really skewed. So you can see part of the back here and then the, this hip goes behind. And you can see part of the front part. So back, front, it's twisted. The egg shape in the rib cage the oblong shape in the hips, then it looks like this leg is carrying the weight and this leg is just kind of providing some support in the back. Ooh, that is done poorly. Let's try that again. Let's do that with blue actually. And whenever you guys make a mistake, rather than erasing it, because we're not aiming for perfection, we're aiming to learn, I want you guys just to redraw it because the more you draw something, the better you're going to get at drawing it. And then this arm came forward with this moving back in the distance. And then we can see just a little bit of the arm behind her. And I know the black and white makes it a little harder to see. Then we have the circle for the head and the oval. So practicing doing these kind of skeletal studies is going to help you better understand the stick figure form we've talked about and it's going to help you get faster at doing it. And this is the start for any pose I draw and I just flush it out from here. So before I let you guys go, before we say goodbye, I actually want to show you guys how changing the proportions on something like this can really make a difference in the style. So we're going to use Sakura as our reference. And I do apologize that she's a little harder for y'all to see. But you guys can clearly see same character, same dress, drawn very, very differently. 
So we're going to start with the Nendo Sakura. And I'm not drawing her perfectly. I just want to illustrate a point. So we know she's about two heads tall, really like two and then like the tippy top of her head. So this all is going to be head and this all is going to be body. Then we have this teeny tiny torso. It's still that right rectangular shape. We have the itty bitty little rib cage and the itty bitty little pelvic box. And then her legs. So you can't really see because it's mostly covered by the skirt, but her legs are going to be just cylinders that taper all the way down. And in our follow-up video, I'm gonna show you guys how to draw both of these. And then she has little bitty arms, little bitty feet, little bitty neck. So the head takes up the majority of the drawing here, right? And then rather than drawing a long rectangle to show her jaw, she has kind of a cute much shorter rounded jaw. Okay, so what about this one? Her legs are super duper long. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I would say six heads tall. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's pretty unusual when we're drawing a child. And her neck's actually really long, but that could be because she's a figma and they do that to kind of see, you can see like the, the ball joint in there. They do that just to kind of help with posing the figurine. And then she's got a kind of long, really thin torso that gets larger as we get to her hips. And then she has long, long legs that take up about half of her body length. So three of these heads are pretty much her legs. And then she's got little triangular feet. And I'm not trying to recreate the, paw, the pose. I'm just trying to capture the gist. And I wish I'd line them up next to each other. That would have made sense. And then it's hard to see because her fluffy, fluffy dress kind of gets in the way. This should give you guys kind of the basic idea. So we can use the skeletal. And then, so she does have kind of the more oval head and then her cheeks are kind of rounded down there. Um, and then we have the egg shape for her rib cage and the egg shape for her pelvis. Okay, so this kind of gives you guys an idea how you can have the same character, but depending on what proportions you use, they can look very, very different. And it also gives you an idea that this stick figure method that we're using, it works whether you're drawing really cute chibi figures or you're drawing something that's more detailed. We could even use the same system for somebody who has very realistic proportions. So hopefully this guy, this kind of helps you guys better understand where I'm coming from with my stick figures and how we're developing our figures. In our next tutorial, we're going to talk about using volumetric drawing to kind of flesh this out more into a more finished pose. So hopefully I'll see you guys then.